for my fortune telling. Have you fortune told how this is gonna play out? I feel nothing. Oh my gosh, Dorothy! You won't be able to live in your house anymore. If you're gonna throw it out, just throw it out. I feel like I just destroyed my own life, that's all. Capitalism is on the verge of collapse, and I think hoarding is a virtue. There is a problem here. I don't look at it in terms of any problem. I think it's great. There is something going on here that seems really out of whack. I work for her. You're part of the problem. How degrading and insulting you can be. You really wished you weren't here. I'm Lisa. All set. All right. We'll get a sage. And I'm a fortune teller. There are energies all around us. And some people are more inclined Thank you. to understand what that energy is than others. But the moon's sound on the path you'd like to know about. I don't know how to explain that. It's just sometimes I know things I shouldn't know and this is from now till the first full moon of the new year. I have lots of feng shui books and zen things. I appreciate the donation. But for some reason, I can't seem to get it right in this house. I am Mary Jane. I've been a friend of Lisa's for over 20 years. The last time I was in the house, it was overwhelming. It's like an avalanche that's really really overtaken her. She has two bathrooms in the house, and one she does not use, and the other one, this isn't safe or healthy at all. I'm doing pretty good at wiping out the roaches in my bathroom. One roach at a time. Next time you have jasmine rice in one of the little microwave cups, fill it with soapy water so they all drown. And guess what? It works. Oh! See, this is what happens when you with them. I'm Jean. I've known Lisa 24 years. I haven't been in her home in years because she stopped allowing people to come in. I had a feeling that she was a hoarder from the stuff out in the yard. And I asked her one day, I says, are you a hoarder? She says, no. This is reusable stuff for her business and her artwork and her jewelry that she does. I'm an award-winning artist. I make handmade books, and now I make my own tarot cards. With the charlatans of nowadays, they can tell you this card means anything, and you would know different because it's a picture. So I came up with a deck of cards that has words on it. Anybody can read the deck and go, OK, I understand what that means. Then they come back and say, you were right on the mark. And I'm going, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I hear that all the time. My dad worked the State Fair of Texas as a barker of the freak show. And I grew up with a lot of the people that worked there, like CeeLo and Lobster Boy and Stretch. And the fortune teller lady took care of me when my dad was working. And she would teach me how to read the cards and tell me about the secrets of being a good fortune teller. And she was like, you'll know this girl. She's got the talent. You cannot ignore it no more. <laughs> One of my dad's favorite things to do was hypnotism. And I saw my dad hypnotize a lot of people when I was growing up. He could just look at you and you were gone. You hypnotized, you're done with. <laughs> I knew I couldn't lie to my dad. He would just hypnotize me. Or maybe he already hypnotized me. I never knew. My mother was manic depressive and she was very violent. When I was little, my dad could deal with it. But it got to a point where my mother got really bad that he started drinking. And after the age of 12, my father became an alcoholic. 
One day they had a big fight, and the next thing I know, I'm in the middle of the fight, and my dad hit me in the face and sent me across the room, so my nose is broken. And it was last time I was there. I moved out the next day when they thought I was at school. Me and my first husband uh, were married, but his mother didn't know it. And when she found out, she had it annulled. But what she didn't know when she had it annulled was I was pregnant. So when I was 20, I had a beautiful little boy, Nathaniel Sebastian. And um, turns out my son was a paranoid schizophrenic. And I was left to take care of my son on my own. He was, uh, was mentally ill most of his life. He eventually joined the group in Waco, Texas. And uh, when they all died, he did too. So Alicia is an official teenager now, and she's hanging around with the wrong group of people. My daughter ended up getting pregnant, so when she had the baby, her and Zoe moved back into my house. And it was like that for a couple of years, but then she didn't want to clean, she didn't want to pay, she didn't want to do things, and so she would leave and I would take care of Zoe. It was great. I had a relationship with my granddaughter I wish I'd had with my daughter. She was just a bundle of joy, and I don't think in my whole life I had ever been loved the way that little girl loved me. I went to go pick up Zoe from her mom from her weekend visit, and she says, I'm never gonna see Zoe again. And I haven't. It's been a heartbreak. It's really been terrible for her. It's the hole that can't be filled. She called me, telling me the police has got a court order to come in my home. I said, okay, I'm on my way. And sure enough, the police department, city code guy was there. They condemned her house. And when they opened that door and I saw the inside, I just wanted to hit the floor. I just could not believe what I was seeing. It's just a tiny, tiny little path. And she's disabled. Well, how are you gonna get out in case of fire and this and this and that? How did this happen? I'm Linda. I'm a landlady and a farmer. I have an inherent passion to be who I am, and I usually do whatever I do big time. I inherited this farm. That's a big blessing. I was the garbage lady, and now I'm a landowner. I'm Angela, and Linda is my best friend and my rock. Well, she was the bag lady because she would go and pick up everybody's garbage because she didn't want it laying around and being ridiculous. My saving increased when I inherited this farm, and I could see that I could use these things here. There is lumber. There is hardware. There are doors. There are toilets. There are sinks. You name it, it's there. I think God is working through me. The religious beliefs really do play a lot in everything that she does. I feel like I'm a chosen one. I'm Dean. I work at the farms. My friend Linda is the owner, and I love her very much. Well, the property is a mess. If you go up on the hillside and you come rolling down that hill, it looks like shh. I'm like a squirrel collecting my nuts for the winter, but I'm collecting them for the future, which doesn't look to be most bright. It's really hard for me to explain other than I have had a vision about uh, preparing. 
I believe in reading revelations that, you know, the end times are just going to be nasty. Social unrest, rioting, pillaging, plundering. Throw in maybe a few natural disasters along the way, like all the super volcanoes will go off at once. Maybe a meteor drop, or we're due for a polar switch in the near future, or we could have political chaos with nuclear bombing. Armageddon kind of deal. The finance markets are going to crash. There's going to be nothing. No grocery stores, no hardware stores, no dry cleaners. If you want a nut or a bolt, you better have it. Anything that you might need or want, I'm sure can be found on that property. I would imagine if there's an emergency, people will come knocking at my door. So that's what I'm all about here on this farm, trying to gather all the resources I can while the gathering is good. COPD, three bad heart valves, thoracic outlet syndrome, neurosyncope. I have balance disorder. I've had four strokes and two heart attacks. I'm not a hoarder. I'm just sick. I'm really sick. And my house is reflecting how sick I am because I'm not physically able to fix it. I'm Dina Stewart Hitzke. I'm with Administration of Resources and Choices Elder Services. We put her in a hotel, but we exhausted our funding in having to keep her in a hotel for this long of a stay. She has three more days before she's going to be homeless. I can't be in this situation. I know that if I don't have this home, I have no place to live, and I will die on the streets. Good morning. Hi. I'm Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and hoarding disorder. Well, I understand we have a really big job on our hands. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass, really. Well, can we walk right in and get started? Sure. OK. Whoa. Wow. This That's an interesting welcome we have there. It's my art studio. OK. This is your art studio? Yeah. OK. Lisa's stuff is literally coming out of the seams of the house. There are just walls of stuff making it dangerous for anyone to be there. Talk to me about this room. What is this stuff? This is my business, believe it or not. And normally, I'm a very organized person. And since it's not organized, it's driving me nuts. But 90% of this is stuff I use for my business. I'm interpreting that as you want to keep 90% of yeah, this? Yeah, but first you got to realize there's three couches under here. OK. <laughs> so when you take out the huge couch that's underneath there, then there's a whole lot less here than you think. Right now, she doesn't have a lot of insight into the amount of stuff that needs to go for her house to be usable. While she acknowledges it's in disarray, she's not taking responsibility for all the stuff that she's brought in. It's getting more and more narrow as we go. For you, that's a problem. For me, it's being able to hold on to stuff to get there so I don't fall and get hurt. So there's a door here Yeah. completely blocked. Yeah, I don't go in there because well, that's Zoe's room. Every time I go in there, I get upset. And instead of working on the table and doing art or sitting at the writing desk and writing, I cry. And why is that? Because I, I know a little bit about Zoe. This it's, 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 You know about bleaching? Okay, well, you can get mildew out and mold. And ultimately, if it's not going to be processed and re-cleaned, um, then it'll be used as a rag. I don't like going to the store and buying stuff when I can be a creative thinker and think outside of the box. 
oftentimes a rug will just disintegrate. And what you have here is cording. I can take a, a string and I can tie up raspberry plant and tie it up to a stake. She goes through everything, except for probably the sewer. She's pretty thorough. <laughs> I don't think I should get rid of anything. What's the purpose of that? To get rid of something. Yeah, that's a given. We say for the future, we're hoarders. You know, we're first to admit exactly what we are. And I think hoarding is a virtue. I think wasting is sinful. I think I'm doing exactly what God would have me do. Absolutely respect every single solitary thing that man has made. Dean and Angela had been working in the barn. I had put all of her stuff away for the winter. He was re refinishing some wood. He went to have lunch. I went in the house and I was going to get some loving and I looked out and poof. I believe it was spontaneous combustion rags that uh, imploded. Millions of dollars worth of items destroyed in that fire. You know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. He gave me this farm and he took away the barn. My issues with the health department came to a head. They told me I needed to get rid of everything. And when I asked to talk to them about it, they said, we don't need to talk with you. You just need to get rid of everything. Just totally insane situation where if it's not undercover, then we're taking it. I just felt that, you know, we were going to have a war zone on my property. I was just going to be raped. She needs to clean up her mess. She needs to get the trash out of there. I believe that if the health department decided to come in and really attack her, that she could lose the farm. I've experienced my local government as a real form of terrorism. And I'm sick of it. This is why, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. Lisa has had multiple losses in her life. She wants to hold on to anything that is connected to her granddaughter, Zoe. Hopefully, someday, she'll be able to reconnect with Zoe and foster a healthy relationship rather than holding on to the stuff that she feels is connecting her. I have not been able to go in that room in 10 years and not cry. Okay. And it's, and, and the way I, I and I, I, I realize this a long time, the way all my family pictures are back there. I don't think it's an accident that I've hide all these things in front of the pictures. But as you can see, I am semi-organized. These are all the stuff I use all the time, and I can hold on, and I can reach them, and use them, and get them out. All right. So this is my <sighs> bathroom. OK. So a couple questions. Do we have running water? Running water. Toilet works? Kind of. So how do you and use that's the that's where the roaches are. Right there is where the roaches are. I, I, I can see them, but ah. how do you use the toilet? Well, I just fill that with water and pour it in just as if I was flushing it from the back, and it flushes fine. OK, let's see the last room. OK, so Lisa, this appears to be the only place to sit in your house. Is this where, essentially, your office has uh, mitigated to? Mitigated to, OK. What do you do for a living? What is your business? Well, I write and illustrate children's books. But okay. to pay for that, I do fortune telling. Have you fortune told how this whole thing is going to play out? No, I can't read my own. Ah. Lisa, are you ready to start? I am ready. Let's go. All right. She has more stuff than she can take care of and contain, and it's actually destroying her life. And if she doesn't get a hold of it, she is going to lose her home and potentially be homeless. It's just going to be an organization sort job. And we're not even going to think about throwing anything away. The mantra is, how can we save this?
I'm Dr. David Tolan. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in the study and treatment of hoarding disorder. Dr. David Tolan. Hi, I'm Linda. The first thing I notice is that this is just acres and acres of clutter. I'm collecting wood to repair things, to build things. Every little piece to me is valuable. For Linda, nothing is garbage. Do you have too much stuff? I don't think that I could ever have too much stuff. I look at a world in the future that is like a blackout where capitalism has failed. You know, money's going to be worthless. It's what do you have? And this will happen when? Our dollar is on the verge of collapse within the next six months to a year. She believes the apocalypse is upon us and that she is going to be one of the lucky few people who survives it because she has all the stuff. Well, if you read Revelations, it's not a pretty picture. It's, you know, war, famine. I'm a Christian. I believe that what I'm thinking is God-given. She was essentially making the argument that God wanted her to hoard. This is my kitchen area. It's where I cook. Right off the bat, I'm, I'm interested in talking to you about rotting food, and I'm interested in talking to you about insects. I was really surprised when we walked into the kitchen and I saw the flies. Has anybody ever suggested to you that there is a problem here? I, I don't look at it in terms of any problem. I think it's great. Linda is offended by the fact that I pointed out the flies in her kitchen. As the psychologist here, I am going to be pointing out where I see problems potentially. You know, I don't really pay attention to other people's standards of living and their mode of operandi. I have a vision that's different than, you know, you most people. You are, your vision is unique. I'm connected beyond myself. She's managed to find a script that allows her to deflect almost everything. And she'll say that to you standing in the middle of what is clearly a problem. Hi, Angela. This is Dr. Tolan. Hi, Angela. How are you? Very Hi, nice Dr. to meet Angela. you. Nice to meet you. So, Angela, I'm, I'm curious. What are you doing here? Well, I'm making rope. This is upcycle. It becomes clear to me that Linda has found a like-minded person in Angela. These four days are, are likely going to be a the truth hurts kind of moment. We truth? Have to... I mean, you're going to talk like that? You've got the mm -hmm. truth? I see that it, it's... <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yes, I can see, Linda, that the whole discussion is mm -hmm. flaring up a high level of defensiveness oh. in you. Linda is just testy as all get out. Oh, my Linda, God. Linda. Excuse me, let but me, let me clarify. that really was offensive. Yeah. First of all, if that's offensive, let me promise you, I'm going to offend you again and again and again okay, for the well, next I'm four years. I'm just going to kiss it off. Let you go over my head. Yeah. Linda is not going to be honest with me. She's not going to listen to what I have to say. And she is going to defend her actions to the teeth. If that continues, I'm not going to be able to help her. And if I can't help her, she may lose this farm. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. There's been an emergency alert on all the phones. OK. Monsoon, the streets are completely flooding. I'm going to need to bring 15 crew members in to work on the inside. I know there's nowhere to stand, but I have to do it. We okay. only have two days, and if anybody can do it, you can. OK, hon, thank uh, you. This is a nightmare. We can't work outside. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I'm truly in a panic. Everybody, come in. It's going to be tough, but find a spot to stand. We've never done it like this before, but we're going to do it. We're just packing everything up, getting it out into the carport to create a space inside the living room for us to work. Is this a keep or not? That's a keep. I use the fortune telling top on top of that. What about these? Are these trash or keep? Oh, no, I use those in my business. That's all business. Styrofoam. Trash. Oh, no, those aren't trash. Those are really important. Oh, man, honey. Like when I do a photographic print and I don't put it between the styrofoam, it gets ruined. And you'll find a lot of ruined prints because they weren't between the styrofoam. Got it. 
This is going to be a hard person to break through. In her mind, she could potentially use everything in there. It's all business related. <laughs> but she's got too much and she can't keep it all. Here, this is business too. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's business. No, let's go out here this way. I want you to see what we're doing out here and okay. keep touring. Okay, hold on. I'm having, just hand me the stool. Giving you the stool. Okay, let me move this. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have bent down like that. It's all right. It's my fault. Just tell me what's going on. Oh, I just get real, real dizzy. Within only a couple hours of starting this process, Lisa's already had a couple incidents where she's had trouble breathing, she's had to use her inhaler and lay down. My blood pressure just kind of like leaves me and I just get... So hold, put your hand on my arm for a second. And you shake a lot. Tell me ex about that. Yeah, well, it's kind of like it just goes with it. Okay? Yeah. I think I need to lay down. So Dina and Dr. Zazio, Lisa is really just having the shakes big time. Okay. I just could And the words bit. aren't coming out clearly. As long as I'm breathing and I can take a deep breath, I'm good. It's getting the deep breath I can't do okay. right this minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you need to take a time out and trust that we've got your rhythm. All right? And you can see, you know, if there's any big items, we'll throw them on the truck. We'll ask you first, okay? Yeah. All right. I'm really worried about her physical stamina with her medical issues to continue for the next few days. We're trusting that you're going to rest, okay? Five minutes, I'll be fine. Okay. I can do this, this is gonna work. I can do this, this is gonna work. I got to learn a little bit about her and a little bit about how she operates, and she's very defensive. I mean, she wants to pick a fight. Hi. My name's Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner that specializes in biohazard and hoarding. Linda really believes the end of the world is coming, and she's going to be the place to go for whatever anyone needs. I'm excited about getting some work done that I need to have done, particularly because the barn burned down. My concern after looking at this property is that danger is real still. Would you agree with that? No, I don't have any fire fear. That's exactly what okay, I'm talking well, about. Okay, well, you have the worry <laughs> and the anxiety, OK? Like I said, all we can do is point out our concerns. I know. I've heard that over and over again. Yeah. So I really don't want to hear it again. Why do you need this stuff, just so I know? Like that bag right there that's falling apart, and there's I don't even know what's in it. Well, this I think this is a scrap uh, insulation. And sometimes I just need little itty bitty pieces of insulation to stick in a little crack. What about this old basketball hoop? What would we do with that? I don't know. I think this is a good uh, piece of metal that can be used. Everything I ask her about on this property, she has an answer for. She's going to fix it, sell it. There's no way. I can look around and see a bunch of these things. This table right here. That I really don't want to be subjecting myself to your standard. It's about cleanup and organization and saving. I deal with a disorder known as hoarding. You can agree that this is a hoarding problem or not, but that's my job. I don't job. look at hoarding as a problem. I look at it as a virtue. Mm -hmm. She loves being a hoarder, she'll admit it. How am I going to justify taking stuff away from someone that sees value in being a hoarder? We can't help with the crisis of the county coming in and, and mandating that you do it then. Or we can't help another fire starting and burning down another barn. Well, I don't know how to deal with you because I agreed to have people come and help me. She wants to clear the barn. I'm more concerned about the fire danger to her house and where she sleeps at night. There's some real safety issues at your house that I wish you could see and make that a priority instead of just making more storage. I don't live my life thinking about peril and danger and what if and what if and 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 if. I'm really not here to talk about fire and safety. Excuse me, I'm leaving. All right. 
you know, sorry, this is not working for me. This is not how I want to spend my hours and my morning. Why is it bad when people care about her? I, I can just consider mostly both and you're wasting my time. I'm just trying to help her understand that she's in danger. I actually really wished you weren't here. Thank you. I want you to head over here, sweetheart. Oh, my game board. Hey, oh my, that black thing. No, 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 no. I'll get it. Oh my God. I'll get it. Oh my God, I use that for my fortune telling. There's actually two of them. I got it. Oh my God, they're throwing out the bottles with the, the nets. Yep, don't throw them out, because those are my kachinas for this year's project for all souls. Well, you saw the kachinas in my bedroom. What you size You don't have skull? space for this kind that of thing. That stays out in the carport. Oh, honey. Now you're talking about throwing away stuff that I have a business plan for that I've been saving for two years to have enough of them to do this. I know you don't feel like you hoard, but we're looking to find you. And you're hidden under the dirty, empty well, you bottles. Throw that out, I have no projects for all souls to make money on this year. Fine. So where will this typically go? Normally, this is in one of those brown PVC cabinets. OK, got hey, it. It's very valuable. How are you doing? So good to see uh, you. Somebody. Hey, 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 yeah. hey, I'm right here. I'm right here. What's up? That's Gene. He needs to leave. He needs to leave now. Sweetheart, I am your friend, and I love you. Use your words. Somebody call the police. My God. You know, with your health the way it is, I didn't know if you had a heart attack or stroke laying in the floor, can't get to a phone. We don't have to fix this relationship now, but would you like at some point to salvage this relationship? No. Out of all due respect to you, if that's what you want, I will walk away. Just remember, I always care about you and I will always love you. I've done nothing to you, okay? I felt like she was looking at a monster or something that came up from hell. I'm your friend. Why are you acting like this? <laughs> Lisa feels like Jean's responsible for everything that's happened to her. And if she doesn't acknowledge that she has a mental illness, her risk for rehoarding is extremely high, if not inevitable. Just take your time. Oh my God, I've saved that for two years. Okay, keep that please, for now. Oh my God, whoa, why are you just throwing out all my papers? That's what I make my stuff out of, is those recycled papers. My business is over. Oh my God, they're throwing out the stuff I use. It's always a case-by-case -case situation when you choose to battle with someone who hoards. But the ultimate goal is to get her back in her house. The next big thing is to disassemble this tiki hut, oh, hell no. which is the code violation. Are oh, you yes. kidding me? That's what keeps my windows from getting broken. I do my writing, my creating. I sit out there and watch my sunsets. You've just ripped away my whole life. You won't be able to live in your house anymore if we don't. In order to eliminate the code violations, we have to get rid of the tiki hut. No, no, I don't want to hear it. You're tearing down everything that's important to me. You really are, and I don't want to talk about it. I'm really on your side, but I also know you can't keep your house if we don't clean it. We you have... know what? If you're going to throw it out, just throw it out. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. Let's have a little talk, OK? It was about safety and safety and safety. I love you, and I think you're badass. But this I has a bunch of 
Yeah. We're talking about working. They're supposed to come out of me and supporting me. That they're just putting up roadblocks so because so, they can't handle it. about the rotten apples the other day. She's like, well, I'm not going to eat the rotten apple part. She's just cutting it off. I mean, I'm, I don't want to quibble with her over an apple. We're both trying to look at this big picture and go, this is a mess. The problem oh, yesterday was with your amount of empathy. You are not very soft. You're not very kind. The way that you word things were very, I felt, rude. There's no easy way for us to sugarcoat what needs to be done, said, anything here. She needs the support of you guys there when we're there. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm, I was going to go talk to her alone for a minute. Angela's kind of emotional right now. She's struggling, but she does understand how important it is that we all come together as a team. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let them do a fast cleanup. Why not let go of anything that is going to take a bunch of work? We can we can get brand new things. So we can I'm get nicer things. I'm there and get rid of program. Linda, people sit across the street daily and watch this place. Helicopters, yes, they do, and helicopters hover. And there's something brewing, and I don't like it. And it, ever since the, the health department thing, we need their help. We need them right now. All these judgments. All these judgments See, but, coming mm -mm. out. And had to hear about 100 flies. Fruit flies. I, I was in the process yes. of making apple juice. Today. That it was just balls. Sure. Well. It hurt her feelings. Let me say that. So, you know, I'm really not prepared to talk with you. The clutter is obviously a big piece of this farm's problem, but maybe an even bigger piece is this group mentality where it is us against them. And for outsiders like me and Corey to come in, immediately everybody's defenses go up. She does have respect I for you as a person. That, that's fine. I, to be honest, I, whether you, you should feel, care. Whether you feel respect or not it is not doesn't change how my day goes. Those are really cold words. Well, and that, 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 that's well, what's offensive. So what I, what I will you say, can go ahead and go. Everybody either argues, denies, or storms off. All right. Yep. I don't know how we're going to accomplish anything under those circumstances. We have to pull down things like all of this netting. Oh, don't take this lattice down, though. What's going to stop the homeless people that come into my yard, use my water, in my yard, sleep in my thing, and try to come in my yard? What's going to stop them? I'm just asking you. I hear everything you're saying. But code enforcement is going to not only red tag your house, but throw you out. And I have one goal. That's for you to keep your home and to find yourself. Remember, that was my commitment. It's going to be gone. Nope. It's going out in the back of trucks. I believe that that's how you feel, but I'm going to hold a different vision for you, hon. Yeah, well. OK. The truth will be in the pudding. My job is to destroy Lisa's life in her eyes. All right, let's go. My job is also to comply with code enforcement. So that's what I have to do, and I'm going to take it on myself. I can't live in this house without being able to even sit on my own porch without being hit by a pellet gun or have my property destroyed. Dirty rubbers on my porch, balls all over the place, and they're going to get away with it because, you know what? Policemen never want to do their job. I think it's just difficult if there's no, not proof. Uh, if there's no well, there's evidence, no proof they can't do when they don't take the it. rubbers with them and have them looked at. When they don't do cast of feet that are in my yard. So all of this stuff represents safety to you? No, it just means they can't shoot me with a pellet gun from over there at the gate. They can't do that if there's something between them and me. So we're going to have to figure out some solutions to this there that, are no that, solutions. Are not, that are still within the city code, because that's the they problem. They will do what they have to do, and you know what? I want this to be done, but it'll right. be successful for them, but it'll be a failure for me. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I do. Understandably, this is a very difficult process for Lisa, but she is still not taking any responsibility for the situation. It's about the neighbors. It's about the code officer. It's still about everybody else, which puts her at risk for re-hoarding in the future. There are things in a person's life that when they're taken away from you, they destroy part of soul who you are. Is there anything that we can do? 
I will get the house done so I don't lose it. Okay. You got it. You got it. You're doing okay? This is my garbage, garbage pile. Mm -hmm. Linda said she made some progress last night. She filled up a couple bags, one of them being trash. You ready to get working? Can I get all these guys working? Oh, empty could we? the barn out? Yeah, let's. You know, lampshades that are busted and not nice, you put them over a plant. We're just filling up the space that we emptied yesterday. That's all we're doing right now is filling up the exact space that we emptied. I feel like I'm becoming just like Angela and Dean, becoming one of her minions moving stuff around. Angela, can I? Can we talk to you oh, away boy. from Linda, please? Yeah. This is stupid. I'm sorry, Angela. We're just moving stuff from pile to pile to pile. And then we're going to move it right back in. Tell me this doesn't make sense to you. It only makes sense because it makes sense to Linda. OK, thank you for saying that. You know, That's I mean, the problem that I have it, with doing it, this. It, it's not going to make sense to everybody. Angela, I know you don't want us to leave because we're helping you, but we're not helping her. This process that we're going through with nothing being thrown away is just enabling her. And if she's not careful, she is going to actually become just like Linda, because we already see it. You're becoming her. Do you hear yourself? You I, are becoming I, I, her. I, I live here. I work for her. I, I, I'm, 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 you know. You're part of the problem. Angela is a puzzle. Sometimes. Angela sounds like she recognizes there's a problem here. But as soon as she starts down that path, she flips, and she becomes Linda's yes man. Angela has definitely drunk the Kool-Aid here. If I were to ask you if there's anything we can throw out here. No, I don't see anything. I don't see anything here. Nothing. Nothing out here at all? Absolutely nothing. This will be probably high on my list to keep. This we just got to tell Linda that this isn't working. I don't want to make you suffer without there being some really good reason to do it. So from my perspective, I think I should back out of this process. Is there harm reduction to be done? I, I address the fire danger. She doesn't want to hear it. So that's not an option. I think we're back to the fundamental. Yeah, I really am just tired of this conversation. We have to put it through the grind mill. Do you I'm want us to put it back in as organized as we can? Well, of course, I would expect you to. You guys want to help us load all this stuff back up? I'll meet you guys up top. Do you want to come and say goodbye, or do you want us just to leave? Well, could, you, could you keep it short and sweet? Sure, sure. How short can you keep it? You can time me. Let's have one minute. OK, I'll take one minute. OK, this is the part where we're going to leave you. One issue. If this is supposed to be totally a minute. Is Are you going to take the whole minute? I will take the whole minute, yeah. Well, and then, so how much time are you going to take? Linda did agree to come and talk to us, but immediately demanded to know the time frame in which Dr. Tolan was going to speak to her. I mean, who does that? I'm just going to start talking. How much time are you going to take? I, I don't know yet, but I, oh, mean... I guess I'm not going to be a part of it. But I think I've been uh, enough of a heart of it. OK, so does that mean we're done? Goodbye. We're done. All right. This is an epic fail. We didn't help Linda. There's two outcomes to Linda's story. She dies in the hoard, or the city or county comes and takes it away from her. Neither one's good. So sooner or later, she's going to have to address this. There's a high level of victim mentality on this property. I just know when we leave, she's going to be able to sit here in the midst of all this stuff with the perverse satisfaction that she's been screwed over yet again for the greater good than to you, your trucks to go off with to waste. I'm trying the best I can. I, 
I'm learning right now, as are you, that we have to do something about that back area. Okay, this should be under the carport. This is this is There's no more stuff. room under the carport. Code enforcement comes to check on us. Everything is looking up to code. I swear we've got it solid. And he says the whole back of this side of the yard needs to go away. You're saying you've got to get rid of this. You can't have this. We aren't saying that, Lisa. He's saying I know. that, and we want to make it happen for this, you. I understand that. Right now, we're now on fumes, are we not? Yes. We, we will get it done in an hour, but we have to do it fast and now. Code enforcement is asking that we get rid of the back half of everything in that yard. Clear? Clear. Let's go. I just want it done. My life is ruined, but the inspector will be happy. All right, wheel her in. This was put on the door before we got here. Yeah. And the news is it can come down. Oh, that's bad. Everything's in compliance. Your house is in compliance. Your bathroom's in compliance. You've got the backyard in compliance. And you know what? When? Zoe comes back, she has a place to stay. Yeah, I appreciate you guys that did all this. It's just, you know, there's lots of issues that are still going to be going on, so. Well, mostly we want for you to be able to wheel around with your wheelchair in here. Use some of the furniture as it's meant to be done. You've got at least two spaces to create. This room gets too hot. I specialize in hoarding disorder, and many of the times people are thrilled at all the help that they've received. In Lisa's case, she is so focused on what she's lost that she can't see what she's gained. If we didn't pull this off today, she had no place to live. I know I should be really excited because the red tag's going down, but the joy of being back in the house and the joy of the house being the way it is is overshadowed by what I've had to give up.